I would like to talk a little bit of, about the characteristics, even though I've already mentioned to you who the best candidates are for first step. <clears throat> but some of the ca characteristics are of children who can benefit the most. They tend to be a temperamental, oppositional, impulsive, and they look like they have attention deficit problems. Now, um, I forgot to mention when I told this story about Mark, my son, do you remember he was diagnosed with minimal brain damage? From the, uh, up until about the 1970s, for about 30 years, every child in this country that they didn't know what was going on with them was diagnosed with minimal brain damage. Then in the 70s, we needed money for more research, and we decided that children that we didn't really know what to do with had attention deficit disorder. For the last 30 years, almost every child in this country that had something tweaky going on has attention deficit disorder or ADHD. Nobody has minimal brain damage anymore. <laughs> unless, unless you've been hit by a truck, you know, but uh, so that label has totally gone. It was here for 30 years, it's gone. Now for 30 years we've had attention deficit disorder. It's time for a new label. Every 30 years we change. What are we gonna have the next 30 years? Autism, some form of Asperger's, some spectrum disorder. And nobody will have attention deficit disorder anymore. Now, okay, I'm saying this very facetiously. There is something going on with these children, okay? My son Mark has minimal brain damage, attention deficit disorder, very autistic-like tendencies, but the good news is, you know, like he forgets things, he loses things, he, he can't drive a car because he'll fall asleep, he, or not focus, uh, he makes too many appointments, he's very kind, and, and he, when he was six years old, you know, the, the psychologist said he will do great with the secretary, and she was absolutely right. You know, when he has somebody who keeps him on, in line, he's doing great. So actually, I'm really not here to tape a, a, t a course. I'm actually here to find a cure for my son's problem. And a psychiatrist told me that the cure for Mark is to get him an organized wife. So I'm here looking for an organized wife. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> not really. I have pictures. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, and Mark actually is doing great. He has a five acre farm with two horses. I just inherited his goats, Ben and Jerry, but he has, because <laughs> they were escaping, a dog and a cat, and he does great. He volunteers and he takes care of his farm. He's awesome, he still smiles. But anyway, what I was going to say is that the label doesn't mean deadly squat, okay? The good news is that we know a lot about how to help these children be very successful in life. And that's why, you know, when you guys say, well, what about children with autism? What about children? All oh, this stuff is good for every kid, you know? Just the basic. You need to give them the basics, the expectations. Teach them. Reinforce them. Notice them doing the right thing. So, um, so if you have children who look like they have attention deficit problems, before putting them on medication, try first step. You know, and if you try first step, which really do, gives a ton of attention for appropriate behavior, it's not only the teacher, but there's a coach that helps do this. The parents are involved. And if the child in the first five days still doesn't respond to the program, then you need to look at some, you know, more stuff. But try to, um, to, to try to um, work with it. Uh, some characteristics are that they spend less time on task, meaning they don't do what the teacher wants them to do most of, many of the times. They have many more negative interactions with their parents, their siblings, their teachers, and their peers. And it's like, you know, you follow these kids, they get up in the morning and it's like the parents saying, didn't you remember to brush your teeth? How many times have I told you? Here, hurry up. You need to eat breakfast. Finally, they get on the bus, and the bus driver says, keep your backpack to yourself. You know, keep your hands to yourself. They get off the bus, and then the assistant says, you know, don't run. Don't do this. Keep your... And these kids are like, all day long, people are, you know, in interacting with them in a negative way. 
So it's really amazing. Nobody likes them. Uh, well, not nobody likes them, but worst of all, the, the other children don't like them. If the other children don't like them, you have to do something. It's not even a choice. Because the research is very clear that if children are rejected by their peers, are not liked by their peers, when they're very young, they're at very high risk of juvenile delinquency. You have to do something. And that's one of the thing, things that what we, this is what we try to focus on in first step to improve these, especially involving the rest of the peers. We involve the rest of the peers, and that's been the most successful part of our program, is that the rest of the class helps the, the, the focus student become you know, the captain of the team instead of the bad kid that they always t tell on. And I'm going to tell you how that works. But, um, this is incredibly important. If you see children that are not liked by other kids, don't go, oh my gosh, it's Johnny again. Everybody's ready, but we have to wait for Johnny. Right. Too bad. Well, what do you think? All these kids are going to be on his case because you have expressed a dislike for this kid. Don't do it. It's very, very dangerous if you do this kind of behavior. What you need to do, even if you don't like that kid, and he probably is a very tough one. You try to find opportunities to showcase him. For example, you know, uh, everybody color the uh, triangles blue and the squares yellow. Okay, that, those are the directions. You know how to do that. But I see that Johnny is picking up his yellow crayon. And I say, may I have your attention, please? I just want you to notice that Johnny was following directions. He started to color his triangle yellow. Good for you, Johnny. And I don't care if you don't give a rip about it. I have just you know, showcased Johnny in a, in a positive way. You try to find opportunities to showcase him so that the kids want for the teacher to be happy. When you're happy, they feel safe, OK? And if, and if, you, are, if you are mean or if you're you know, um, uh, criticizing, they get scared. And they say, oh my gosh, the teacher is not happy. They're going to they're gonna take it out on this kid during recess. Because you're not making my very most favorite person that I love the most happy. And they don't say that, but this is how that works. So please be very, very careful that you always treat every single child with respect and try to showcase those kids that bug you the most. And <laughs> remember, it's not about you. It's about kids, the, making them successful. Uh, some other uh, characteristics are that uh, antisocial behavior is part of normal development. If a child messes up once in a while, don't be alarmed. I mean, it's just part of normal development. Don't freak out. Uh, the crucial features are the frequency and the intensity. So if a child has problems in the classroom, on the playground, on the bus, in different settings with different people, then you need to start becoming worried about, oh, it's not just me. Because you know, sometimes you have these kids that do just great with one teacher and they're like hell on wheels with another teacher. It's not the kid, it's the teacher. It's the way, or, or the work. You know, it's the way the, the adults are interacting with the kids. So um, you, you uh, don't want to get alarmed too quickly, okay? And always go back to the basics. Are my expectations clear? <laughs> have I really thought, you know, you go, and then if they still have problems, then you can start thinking maybe they need more. Now, Hill Walker tells a really funny story about, well, I don't know if it's funny, but um, he says uh, he was at a playground and this kid, it was lunchtime, and a kid, he says, what do you have in your lunch bill? Kindergarten, the kid opens up his lunch bill and there's a gerbil in the, in the, <laughs> And Hill says, so why did you uh, bring a gerbil for lunch? And he says, it's for the sacrificial rights of small animals during recess. That's a problem. <laughs> it's not funny, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, if chronic problem behaviors, and I, I kind of mentioned this already a little bit, 
has not changed by the fourth grade, by the time they're eight or nine years old, mm -hmm. and they've started, to, they've had that problem behavior from you know preschool, kindergarten, first, second, third grade, it must be treated as a chronic condition, like diabetes. It, uh, you know, it, the, these kids, will, will, it will be a chronic problem and they need help and support a, a lot. So early intervention in school, home, and the community is the best hope for getting kids off to a successful path. And we know that if we intervene early, we really can get these kids on a successful path. And it's not that difficult, no matter what their background is. You know, we can do a lot, but we have to start as early as possible. And that's why we are very excited that we're working with preschoolers and the three and four year olds now, and it could even start earlier. That's why I'm happy that some of the community people are here that work with, with uh, infants and so on. Um, some of the typical problem behaviors that uh, <clears throat> that we, you know, that this program really helps with, is off-task behavior, aggressive behavior, not following directions, arguing, poor social skills, tantrums, pestering others, transition problems, and bullying. So those are sort of the, the, the those are the kinds of behaviors that we can really change with this. Why do most children misbehave? Remember. Mm -hmm. Attention, they want to be noticed, and or avoidance, the task is too difficult or too boring, or both. I'm going to tell you a little uh, thing that helped me a lot as a teacher. Um, I use a metaphor that uh, looks like every child has mm -hmm. an attention bucket inside of their body, okay? There's an attention bucket. When that attention bucket is full, with attention. The kids are content, they follow directions, they're doing what they're supposed to do, as you know, 85% of the children usually are. If that attention bucket is not full, they truly have attention deficit. They need more attention, okay? So in order for that bucket to be filled, it's very, very difficult if you behave well. Like you have not, you have been extremely attentive. You have answered some questions. You have been extremely respectful. You're sitting on this side of the room. I don't look at this side of the room. I'm looking here. I see these guys over here, you know, but I don't look much at this side of the room. And a lot of teachers have certain places that they look. So she has been extremely respectful, extremely attentive, but, but she has an attention deficit disorder. She needs attention. And we have also found that children need attention at certain intervals. Some kids need it every 30 seconds, and they make you very tired. Some children need it every minute, some every five minutes, some once a day, some don't even give a rip because their bucket is full and they could give a rip if you ever paid attention. But this one here, she's on a three hour, uh, once every three hours, she needs attention. And um, I'm, not, I'm not paying attention to her, right? So I'm doing this, I'm doing this, and she's listening, she's listening. If she continues to be so respectful, and listen, she's not gonna get any of my attention. All she has to do is hit her over the head, throw something, yell something, and I will be right there mm -hmm. immediately. Inappropriate behavior is a very effective, efficient way to get your attention need met. Yeah. And I believe that the need for attention is just as necessary as the need to go to the bathroom, to go to sleep, to eat, to do all those things. The need for attention is real. And if you don't get enough, whether it's a child or an adult, it ne you need to get it some way. And the best way to get it is to do something bad because everybody will notice. She will talk to her, she will talk to her, I will talk to her, the little bucket is getting filled. And, and the bucket doesn't care whether it's positive attention or negative attention. So your, your, your role as a, as a teacher or an adult, and this goes with your spouse and with your children and with your grandparents, is to kind of be a detective and figure it out. How much attention do they need? And with first step, that's what we do. We figure out, you know, how, how often does a child need attention? And so we start out giving the kid 
uh, a kudos every 30 seconds, an opportunity every 30 seconds, then the next day it's every minute, then it's every two minutes, then it's every four minutes, and then finally it's every 10 minutes. So we, the teacher can't do this alone because it's too intensive, that's why you need a coach. And I'm gonna go into that in a minute, but, but we try to figure out, you know, what is the uh, attention fixed schedule for the kid, and then we go with that. But um, if you have children that are, you know, but you find yourself saying a hundred million times, Johnny, 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 that kid is getting a lot of attention for inappropriate behavior. So you want to tr try to turn that around, okay? All right, so um, with avoidance, you know, and this is one thing with first step that you have to watch out for. First step does not teach academics. So if you as a coach find out that the child cannot do the work, they can't read. You know, it says color the circles yellow and the triangles blue and the kid is not doing it. And you say to the teacher, does he know what blue is? Yeah. Does he know what triangles are? Yes. He knows all that. So why isn't he doing it? Because he can't read the instructions. You know, and these are called, I sometimes I call them shut up sheets, you know, <laughs> but the, the teachers give kids all these worksheets and the kids don't know how to do them. <laughs> so you have to make sure that the, the child knows exactly how to do the task. If they can't read it, then uh, they need to have help in, in reading. Or if they can't write, they need to have help in writing. First step doesn't teach that, it only teaches them to attend to it, okay? So, um, why would you want to participate in First Step? It's fun. I wish every kid could play the red and green card game. We call it the red and green card game, okay? Uh, it has helped many children get off to a great start at school. And we, one thing that we always talk about is that the adjustment to school is very difficult for many children. We don't realize how extremely difficult the adjustment is for many kids. <coughs> so sometimes they need help. Uh, it's research-based, positive, and it uses best practices. So it's cool. Are you teaching this in pre-K? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you a video, and all these videos are available, uh, you know, as well. Um, and this, this is the video that we give to the parents to explain the program, so I thought that might help you kind of get a, an <laughs> overview. So um, look at it with a critical eye and see... Um, if you have any major questions when this is done. So this is, this is what we tell parents, that what it's all about, okay? First, S, T, P, P. Welcome to the team. The First Step to Success program is an early intervention program to help young students get off to a successful start at school. One of the First Step goals is to create a support team for the child doing well at school. Research shows that when students learn successful school behaviors early, they have the best chance of success later in life. The First Step intervention which is presented in this video, provides tools necessary for school success. The First Step program has three components, screening, class, and home base. The screening and class components take place at school where the First Step coach works with the teacher, the child, and the rest of the class. Part of the class portion is presented as the red card, green card game. In this game, the green side of a card is shown when appropriate school behavior is shown. When inappropriate school behavior is exhibited, the red side of the card is shown. Points and attention are earned when the card is on green. The main objective is to give students a lot of attention for expected school behavior and less attention for inappropriate behaviors. When students do not know what is expected of them in each situation, they are taught. If your child has been chosen to lead the class during the class portion of this intervention, you will be asked to meet with the first step coach and your child's teacher. The school will want you to be an active part of the team, helping your child be as successful as possible. Women need your help because you guys know Edward better than anybody. 
you will receive a feedback card every day. If enough points have been earned for successful school behaviors, the class will have earned a special activity in school such as Simon Says, Extra Recess, and some other fun group activity. In addition to this school activity, we ask that you as a parent spend five to ten minutes doing something special with your child for doing well at school. This could be as simple as an extra story, helping with dinner, a walk, or anything special involving spending time with you. We want to surround your child with positives for doing well in school by everyone important to them, teachers, classmates, and you. Your role during this first part of First Step is to give three positive statements to your child when they have earned their points. Spend five to ten extra minutes with your child for doing well at school. Sign and return the card so that you can remain in contact with the teacher. Returning the card back to school the following day is important so that the child is taught that you and the teacher are in regular contact and that you highly value school success. If enough points for successful school behaviors are not earned on a specific day... So, but should he be sad? No! No, because he can always try again tomorrow. We ask that you sign the card and send it back. It is important that you simply thank the child for bringing the card home and let them know they will have another chance to earn points the next day. We ask that you do not spend a lot of time discussing what went wrong during the game or punishing the child because we want to minimize giving a lot of attention for inappropriate behavior. You should receive cards home for approximately 30 days. The green card game starts out with short 20-minute segments and gradually increases until your child will be playing all day and then for several days at a time before a card comes home. After approximately 30 school days, when the child is doing well in the classroom, the gains will be faded. The second part of the first step intervention is called home base. This is the home part of the program which begins after the child has been successful in the classroom for approximately 10 days. The teacher will now be the one using the card with your child in the classroom while you begin the home part of first step with the first step coach. We suggest you meet with the first step coach for approximately 30 minutes a week for six weeks. The home based part of first step gives you tips and ideas on how to work with your child in a fun and positive way. The home based portion of the first step intervention is divided into six sections. The materials of home base provide you with the parenting tips and activities you can do with your child to center on each a different topic each week. There will be a parent handbook for you to keep. You will also receive a set of parent tip cards and a set of activity cards for you to do with your child at home. We urge you to spend five minutes each day playing these activities. These home base activities are not contingent on winning the game at school. The time you spend with your child for doing well in school is separate from the home base activities. Even if your child has not earned enough points for a home reward during the class portion of first step, once you begin home part of first step, we want you to spend five to ten minutes working with the home base activities daily. It will be essential that you model and show your child what you want them to do and how to do it. Many families find it best to build activities into your daily routines or schedule such as right after bath time or right after dinner. There is a separate topic presented each week with parent tips and fun activities to do with your child during that week. The home-based lessons are organized to build on each other. Each topic is practiced for one week and then the next topic is introduced. to do is after you watch this uh, talk to a neighbor for a minute and discuss what you saw and, and then I'm going to ask if you have any questions you know this is sort of your initial overview may I have your attention please I just realized something my wand this is a very good example of not being clear with your instructions I have not taught you about this wand 
right? You are my class. And here's the rule. When you are talking and doing stuff and you hear this, and I say, may I have your attention, please? You stop talking and your eyes are on me. Okay? So let's practice that. You're my, you're my kids now. I hope you're not feeling intimidated, but I, this, is what I, this is what I would do as a teacher. Because it really is, is amazing how I really didn't set this up. But usually what I do is, you know, in the beginning, you know, I'll, I'll teach the kids and then the kids still are talking and I start giving out little bracelets and they all stop. You guys didn't. You kept on talking, 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 because I haven't taught you. And this is a, so now watch, we're going to practice, okay? So you guys can talk a little bit longer, and then when you hear the wand, and I say, may I, you stop talking, okay? May I have your attention, please? Oh, my gosh, that took you like 10 seconds. This is so very, very cool. I mean, no, this is really serious. Because before, you were not misbehaving. You were not being disrespectful. You didn't know the rule. There, it wasn't clear to you. I hadn't taught you. Now I've taught you. Every time now when I do this, you will, most of you will stop talking. And this is exactly what happens with kids, okay? So um, <laughs> anyway, do, uh, I already had some questions that I'm going to be answering, such as what if parents don't cooperate and you know they're drug addicts or they don't want. I'm going to tell you about that. What else? They can't read. If parents can't read, then you have to, mm -hmm. to put it either on tape or you do do, do activities with them. Yes. Um, is this a program that schools request? for, you know, to be involved in? Like, how much commitment do you have to get from the overall um, members of the school? You can just buy the kit and do it in a classroom. But it requires, I mean, like, as a, so, like, who would buy the kit? Well, usually it's, it's an intervention, you know, so t typically what happens is that the teacher's having problems with the child. Let's say that we're not doing any research or anything. Teacher's having problems with the, the child. She brings the child to the team, and the team says, you know, somebody says, you, a psychologist, have you tried first step? No, I don't know anything about first step. Okay, well, you know, can we buy the first step kit? There are enough materials for three children in the kit, in that blue bag. And so it's about $50 per child. And... Um, and then, um, then you say, well, we need a coach. So, well, who is the coach, <laughs> you know? You, and you really don't have to go through any training to, to use, you, the materials are very self-explanatory. The way I wrote the, the, the program, it's mm -hmm. the way I'm talking to you now, and, and it's step by step. And so, uh, so, no, it doesn't have to be, it's just like uh, a, a, an extra reading book that you buy for somebody. Because I know that they said, like, for positive behavioral support, you have to have, like, 70% of commitment from, like, yeah, the school no, no, no. and all that. No, so no, this no. is something No, more, no, this is know. only, te this is teacher-specific, okay. even though it's much better if the whole school is using the same principles, but, yeah. Okay. Did you have another burning question, or are you still okay? I'm going to answer your, your, yeah. yeah. Well, we were just, uh, now since you've mentioned uh, the whole school, we are a very small school for kids. We're special ed. Yes. Just that, we don't yes. have any normal time. We are four kids in the classroom. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And uh, we mainly deal with kids from the functional families. Yeah. So mm -hmm. how can we start implementing as a school? You need to do positive behavioral intervention support. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's, that's the first thing that you ha have to do with, especially with the special needs yeah. school, so that everybody speaks the same language. Yeah. But that's, and, and the, the, the book that I recommend, of course, is my, best behavior book, uh, mm -hmm. Building Effective Schools Together, and uh, the resources in your, in your handout. But it has the whole step-by-step -step how you do that, you know, how you, how you set up a positive behavior support system in your school, and what you already have in place and what you have to add on to. But I mean, is there any official? What I was asking is, do we have to get in touch with First Step for Success? Is no, you, know, you can't. Anyway, just, this is no, what I said, no, no, no. certifying. No, no, no. You can buy the kit yes, and do it. Okay. And it's... It's it's very uh, self-explanatory. Absolutely, you can go you can go home and do it. Yeah, yeah you can. Yes. <laughs> well, you have to decide. Sometimes it's the teacher. Sometimes it's an assistant psychologist, a behavioral specialist, a secretary, a principal. We've had principals who will come in and be the coach. You know, uh, sometimes it's a college student. Depends on who you can get. Yes. 
I have a question about the focus student um, being the captain. Uh -huh. And does this get, because I kind of see how that can become problematic if that child is consistently the captain over and over. Well, the um, child will be the captain for 30 days. And it doesn't ever get switched over, over to other children? Or how uh, do other children react to that? They say, what about me? I want to do it. Mm -hmm. Why does he always get to play the red and green card game? <laughs> what do you say? You never know when you get a surprise. If you keep following directions, you may be next. Now we're all going to play and Johnny's going to earn points. And it's always you never know when you get a surprise. It's a and reinforcement that's very powerful. Totally, yeah. And then, and then what, what some teachers do is, let's say that Johnny is absent. The teacher may say, oh, let's see, Johnny isn't here today, but I'd like to play the red and green card game. Take, take the popsicle stick out of the, the can, you know, with all the kids' names on it, and say, oh, Sally, you get to play the red and green card. Do you want to whisper to me what you want to know in front of the And then you just fake it. And then, and then after, the, after the 30 days are over with the target student, then you can, you can play it with individual kids just for fun. You know, so, so it has to be 30 days straight. It has to be 30 for days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but it's, you'll see in a minute, you'll understand it better. It's totally cool. And, and the kids totally, they will, they will. Why, you know, because we, well, we set it up in the beginning. We already know who the focus student is, right? Mm -hmm. But then we, the, I, the coach goes into the classroom and says, I have this really, f and I'm, I'm ahead of myself, but you're going to see this in a minute. I have this really fun game. It's called the, the green card, red card game that I like to play with the class. Who would like to volunteer to, you know, to, put, to earn points on this card? And they all raise their hand. Yay, look at how many people want to do this. Johnny, you're the one. <laughs> so, even though we already know he's the one, you know. <laughs> but, so we have all these little tricks that we, that we well, tricks, you know, kind of, uh, procedures that help with not having children be 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 jealous. And if or you have more than one in one classroom, and can you do it at the same time? No, you can only do it with one child at a time. But what ha what you want to do is, if you're going to do this, you often typically have two or three that could really benefit from it, and that's normal. Don't pick the most difficult child with the most difficult parents. If you're doing it for the first time, pick a child that you think the parents are going to work with you, okay? Because if you have, you know, parents that are, you know, uh, abusive and uh, addicted and, and they're not going to follow through, you're going to feel frustrated because you won't be able to, you don't get the feedback, you can't get in contact with them, they won't return your phone calls and blah, blah, blah. So try to find uh, parents that will work with you, okay? And, and then, so if one time you've done it and, and you're successful, then the next times are a piece of cake. They're just easy. And the best thing is then for the teacher to incorporate this for the rest of her life yeah. into, into, the, you know, into the teaching procedures. You don't have to always use a red and green card, but we do have a, a system where you do it with the whole class as a, as a booster, where the whole class, you have set a timer, the whole class. If the card's on green and the class is doing what they're supposed to do, they get a point. If somebody isn't doing it, I don't say anything, turn the card to red. If the beeper beeps, you don't get a point. You know, so this is an adaptation for to do it with the rest of the class. Yes. Uh, we, we typically don't. And the reason is that, and uh, this is really funny, um, I did a huge implementation in Canada, in Winnipeg, with First Nation people and also with other people. And I had nine, and then one day they asked me to come back and to have a session with 90 parents who had been for, uh, in first step. So I have all these 90 parents here and I asked them how they liked the program and what they liked and what they didn't like. And the one mother, she said, oh, she said, I was so frustrated because my child had temper tantrums all the time. He was a first grader. And she said, they started to use the red and green card on him, and he just stopped like that. No more temper tantrums mm -hmm. in school. And, she, and we always tell the parents, don't use the card at home while we're using it at school. You know, we just want to make sure that, that the kids gets, gets the clear message at, at school. She says, so here I am in the store, and he's throwing a temper tantrum. And I'm so frustrated, I don't know what to do. So I, he's laying there yelling and screaming, and I tell him, in my head, the car's on red. And he just stopped like that. <laughs>
and the re yeah. the reason why we really <laughs> hesitate, unless you really could you you know could teach parents how to do this, guess what? Parents will forget to use green. All they'll do is red. You know, the minute the kid misbehaves, it's like that's red card. And teachers will do this too. They use it as a weapon. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like it's you know it's very tricky. But you know, whatever you do, we don't care. But then don't call it first step. You know, yes. Would you recommend using this in a one-on-one -on -one child therapy session? How would you adapt it? Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I use this all the time. I mean, it's like really cool. Uh, the red and green card's really cool, and especially for children with autism or who need visual cues. You know, so I will have my little, and this is not first step, but, but I have my little, it's the, the basic principle, my little pot with pennies, and I'll be working one-on-one -on -one with the kid and teaching reading, for example, and I'll say if the card's on green and, and the beeper beeps, you know, then the pe you get a penny. If the card's on red, you don't get a penny. And I will have it, you know, I'll just put the pennies in the jar and when the card's on red. <laughs> you know, so yeah, absolutely, you can use it. We use it for Oh, the, that, that superintendent in Winnipeg, he had a staff. They, all his, uh, his staff members would come on Wednesdays for a staff meeting, and they had side conversation, and it really bugged him. And so one day he says, well, I heard about this red and green card game, about first step. And he says, I have here a card that's green on one side and red on the other. It's going to be sitting here. And if there are no side conversations, the card will stay on the green. If there are side conversations, the card will go to red. <laughs> if there are no side conversations, you'll get to leave at quarter till four. If the card goes to red, you'll be here till four. <laughs> and these are all. Like, yeah, administrators, right? So yeah, you can use the same adaptation. Since, since it has to be used for 30 days straight, like you were telling someone else, would you just use it for a certain number of weeks? Oh yeah, you just, you decide, you look at your kid. You know, you look at what, what the kid needs. And then the, the main thing is that you try to stretch the time intervals between the point opportunities so that you start out really intense and then you start to stretch it out, stretch it out, and then eventually you fade it so that they don't need, need the card anymore. But I'm going to go into all those details with you in just a minute, you know, on how to, how to do it for first step. Uh, the other thing, the other question came up was, what if you have lousy parents? We never ever punish a child for having lousy parents, okay? <laughs> so, and many children unfortunately, you know, have lousy parents. And, uh, and that's the biggest uh, uh, complaint we get from parents when we want to do this and we have the meeting. They say, I don't have time. They don't have time. <clears throat> we don't care what you do at school, but I don't have time to do this at home. Well, what we typically do is we get what we call a surrogate parent. We get someone at the school to do the parenting part. So, for example, um, uh, and, and that's been very successful in our uh, New Mexico study, we had 100 kids and we had about 40 that ended up with surrogate parents. And they still, the results were still very, very, uh, very good. But, um, the, I'll tell you a little history. We used to have uh, things written on the red side. So the teacher could actually write, this is what the, the, the actual green cards look, well, what they look like. They have little numbers on them, but we don't use those anymore. But anyway, they had little numbers, they had stuff written on here. You know, the, the child's name, the date, points possible, the goal, the teacher's signature, the, the positive comments, parent signature, and, and the privileges the kid earned. We also had that on the back side, we had uh, problems that happened. And guess what? Teachers were just writing all over the red side and very little on the green side. And we didn't like that. And we tried to teach them in the trainings, do not, you know, don't write all that negative stuff. Well, one day, I'm in Eugene, and uh, I had just done a training. And Cynthia was a latchkey person at the school. You know, she took care of after-school kids. And she came to the training to be trained as a coach. And she was awesome. So Cynthia starts working with a kindergarten teacher. And the kindergarten teacher was great. And they had this kid who lived across the street from the school. He was always riding his bike uh, across the street. And the parents were kind of uh, not, not very kind. You know, they yell at him and so on. But anyway, he lived very close. And um, he was a handful in the classroom. So Cynthia wanted to do the program. So she met with the parents. The coach and the teacher met with the parents. And the parents says, fine. 
and they start doing the program and the kid did great and it's like with many kids you start the program and they're like from Attila the Hun to Mother Teresa they just flip flop it's like oh my gosh what happened here they think they're run over by a truck because all of a sudden they have this interaction you know with the coach and they're special and they get all the stuff and so um, anyway for nine days uh, the kid was just fabulous on day nine, he didn't make his criterion, which often happens it, two or three times during the 30-day period. They don't make their points. And then the rule is, no big deal, you try again tomorrow. Well, he didn't make his points, and then he comes back the next day, you recycle. You go back to the last day that he was successful. So he did day eight. You know, he did day nine, didn't make it. Went back to do day eight, didn't make day eight. They went back into day seven didn't make it because we're trying to find out you know how much reinforcement does he need didn't make it so Cynthia calls me and she says Anamika I don't know what's going on he was doing great all of a sudden he's horrible and I said well I'll come and take a look so we typically keep these in a three ring binder you know all the teacher stuff you keep the cards and then when the kid brings the card back you stick it in the binder and then at the end the kid gets to take all the all the cards home right so um, <clears throat> uh, while the teacher's cleaning up, the kids are leaving, I'm looking through this binder and I see day nine. There was no, uh, you know, he didn't make it. I looked at, at the cards day one through day eight and they had, had the teacher's signature, the coach signature, the school privilege, the, the parent signature, but there was no reward. Like it says, a home privilege earned. There was nothing on day one through day eight, nothing. But they had signed it. So then, day nine, he didn't make it. And you know what they had put here on the back? Spanking in big block letters. So then the next day was day eight, spanking. And the next day, day seven, spanking. So what had happened was when he brought the card home and he earned all his points, they didn't do anything. The minute he messed up, they spanked him. And it probably wasn't spanking, it was probably spank, spank, spank. You know you're supposed to behave at school, blah, 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 blah. whatever. And pff, it, it was a lot more attention than he had gotten before. So what we decided to do was um, we called the parents and said we weren't going to send the card home anymore because Cynthia says, well, I knew that when the dad was in the meeting, he said, he's supposed to behave in school. Do we have to do this program with him? Blah, 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 you know. So the dad was already kind of resistant. So uh, they called the parents, said that we were still going to do the program, but he wasn't bringing the cards home, and Cynthia was going to be his surrogate parent. So every day when he won, when he had his points, he would go to, to her office a few minutes before school was out. She would give him praise statements and do something fun with him, like play a game or you know, some, read him a story or whatever, and he totally turned around. And that's when we decided, when we, this does not mean bad. This means stop, stop and think. It does not, and you cannot write on the red side of the card ever, okay? So, um, I don't know why I started to tell that whole story, but, uh, <laughs> oh, if parents don't cooperate. Yeah, so, so if you have parents who are not uh, following through, we try to find somebody else who is an advocate for the child, you know, in the school who can do the parenting part, and it's, it's really helpful. Yeah, are we good? Yeah. Yes, you had a question. Is, in, that, in those situations, is the term surrogate parent used with the parents? Or how is no, that we don't say anything. No we, just, okay. no, we just say to the parents, you know, we're not going to send a card home. If he gets his points, he's going to do something fun with Cynthia. Oh, no, yeah, no, 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 we don't. I'm just telling you, I don't know what else to, I don't know what else to call it. The reinforcer. We find another reinforcer. Yeah. Okay. So, um, how are we doing here? We're doing good. Um, so, how is the program taught? Well, first, a focused student is identified. I like that word, focused student. We used to say target student, but I like focused student better. Otherwise, it's like a target. Uh, only one child at a time plays the game, and that's important because, you know, you want for this child to have the full get bombarded with attention. This is, you know, before they got bombarded with attention for negative behavior, now they get bombarded with attention. Uh, and, and it also works for children who are internalizers. They need a lot of power and control as well, and, and it works well with them. 
So everybody works together, the coach, the teacher, and the parents work together. The entire class works as a team. The focus student is the captain of the team. A green-red card game is played. Points are earned for doing the right thing. A class activity is earned. So when the child earns all the points necessary, and we have that all laid out for you, they need 80%, then there is an activity for the whole class. Now, with, um, with some of the students, especially when you have students that are a little autistic like or really young, they don't give a rip about the rest of the <laughs> class. They're so self-centered and so focused on themselves. Then we still always do a class activity, but we may have to give that child an individual reward, like you know, 10 minutes on the computer or something that they really like. It depends. That's a problem-solving area. Do you ever see um, a negative effect when the child is getting read and the class activity is not earned on um, other peers kind of blaming that child? Yeah. And, and uh, you know, the, the, but we pre you pre-correct on everything. So in the beginning we say, you know, Johnny, we're all going to help Johnny earn points on this card, okay? And most of the time we're going to earn enough points to have a really fun activity. Sometimes we may not earn enough points. And are you going to be, you know, upset about that? No. Are you going to say, Johnny, you didn't earn enough points and we didn't get off on No. You're going to follow directions, do what you're supposed to do, and we'll try again tomorrow. So you pre-correct all the time. Now, sometimes, and this is why, <laughs> depending on the class, and this is why it works so well with little kids. With older kids, it's like a little bit different. But um, usually, I don't announce to the class what the activity is. The kid knows it. We've made a menu. The teacher has agreed that these are like blowing bubbles or, or singing a song or doing Simon Says, or we have a whole list of stuff. So before the game, I say to the kid, what, what would you like to earn today? And he says, blowing bubbles. And I said, well, let, let me ask the teacher. He wants to blow bubbles today. He said, okay. He said, oh, no, I don't want to play bubbles today. Oh, well, today bubbles is not a good thing. Do you have something else? He said, well, I want to play Simon Says. Okay. Teacher, he wants to play Simon Says. Okay. So, so we'll play Simon Says if you earn enough points. Now, so the kid knows what we're going to do. I know as a coach. The teacher knows. But the rest of the class doesn't know. So I say to the rest of the class, you know, we're going to try to earn points for a fun activity and hope we can make it. Because sometimes if you say, we're going to earn points to play Simon Says, some kids say, oh, I don't want to play Simon Says. That's boring. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't tell them. So you have to be really a very proactive in how you bring all this stuff. Okay. Yeah? Um, is it immediate, the activity? Immediate. Very good question. Immediate, because often they will fall apart two minutes after the activity is over. And you know, we want to make sure that they learn that it has to do with this contingent. Yes? Um, I, I think you had mentioned that in the beginning, the first couple of days of program is like for like 20 minutes or something like that, and then it goes on to like the yeah. whole day. Mm -hmm. Do teachers ever have difficulties? Um, well, the home-based component is after it's the whole day, right? Yeah, no, 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 it's after the third day that the kid's successful. Because I was just wondering if, because I know sometimes teachers have, may potentially have a hard time if like, let's say they do really well during that activity, they earn their green card, but then, you know, an hour later, they like spit in someone's face. Yeah, or, like, exactly, and that happens. That happens a lot. Because they've worked so hard keeping it together during that 20 minutes <laughs> that they fall apart. But the home-based activity is not contingent upon the, the in-class activity. home base is totally separate. It's non-contingent. So no matter how bad the kid has been, we still want for them to do home base. Now, we do want for them to do something if the kid has earned their points. That's different. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, I know there are lots of little pieces. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you all the gory details here in a minute. OK, are we good? You guys are awesome. OK, so after uh, the coach works with the focus kit, the teacher and the parent, after the coach face, the teacher takes over the intervention. The coach is typically in with the child for five days, about 20 minutes to half an hour a day. And then the teacher takes over. Uh, the coach works with the parents on a weekly basis. And the teacher has very little to do with that. Um, how does a green red card work? It provides visual feedback to the students. So green means keep going, you're doing great. And red means stop and think and do the right thing. Points are given on the green side according to a predetermined schedule. How long does it take? Uh, like I said, it's a 30 program days, daily sessions. During the coach phase, the first five days are 20 to 30 minutes a day. And it doesn't have to be the same time. You could do it. 
uh, you know, in the morning from 9 to 9.20, the first day you could do it from 10 to 10.20 the next day. It depends on when the child has the most difficult time. You want to pick a time that's really tough for the kid. So if they have no problem sitting in circle, for example, but they have really a hard time uh, with uh, center uh, activities, you want to do it during center activities because it's, it doesn't make sense if they already are already behaving during circle time that you have the coach sitting there. Uh, you don't want to take it out of the classroom, so you want to do it in the classroom the first five days. Don't take it to recess, you know, because you want to make it a class community kind of thing. Uh, then the teacher phase takes uh, 25 days and it goes, it starts from one hour to all day and then it starts fading out. Do you have like a baseline assessment that you give to your coaches or, um, or to the people that are going to be observing the behavior and like to see, you know, throughout the day? When is it that the problem behavior arises? Is it, I mean, do you the have teacher, baseline assessments? The teacher not? decides. And it, it's all about uh, uh, when the teacher uh, uh, wants you in the classroom, when the coach is available to, to be in the classroom, and we don't really do a baseline. Well, we do all those, those rating skills and the, uh, on task behavior. You know, the, the, we do all that before, yes. Okay. But, uh, but the teacher decides when, uh, you know, when it's going to happen. And the teacher, you know, the coach is a guest in the teacher's room. So you have to work very cooperatively mm -hmm. with the teacher. Uh, then there's a maintenance phase the rest of the year. So the teacher needs to follow the basic principles and catch a child doing the right thing at least every 10 minutes for the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. The program gradually increases from 20 minutes the first day to all day on program day 16. And feedback is faded from every 30 seconds the first day to every 10 minutes by program day 15. And these kids need feedback every 10 minutes for the rest of their school career and probably their life. <laughs> so. Uh, and, and feedback, it doesn't mean that you have, you just can do a thumbs up, you can do a pat on the back, you can do a star on the, on the paper, anything to let the kid know that you notice them. But uh, do you find that uh, it's difficult for teachers to adhere to every 10 minutes for... Extremely maybe? difficult. Yeah. You have no idea how, and that's why things like, the, uh, we have a beeper. You know, we have a, a, a gym bus timer that will vibrate or beep or vibrate, and that really, really helps because the kid's good. The teacher forgets here. Look at my kid. She's awesome. I totally have forgotten about her. You know, but she's good. The minute she's bad, I'll be there. So I have to try to be there before she is asking for it. And that's why the beeper, the timer, the anything, the timers, beepers are awesome to remind the teacher. Yeah. Yeah, and I keep thinking about the other kids that you uh -huh. had asked yeah. before because it it is a lot of extra work to the teacher, and and you know she needs to find the, the time to do that plus the academics plus the other twenty kids in the class. Yeah. To also recognize their, you know. And, that's, good, and this, is, this is exactly what we hear from teachers. I don't have time. I have 30 other, we in Oregon, we have 30 kids now in a class. I have 30 kids, I have six mainstream kids because you know, we're really into mainstreaming over there, which I think is awesome. And, uh, and then I say, look at how much time you spend now with this child, criticizing them, correcting them, problem solving, and then, then they get it, you know, because they, if you have, these children are very time consuming and tiring, you know, and that you spend a lot of time uh, problem solving, talking to parents, talking to counselors, talking to, you know, recess people, talking to bus people about their bad behavior. And if you look at that, and now you say, you still spend that time, but now it's positive. So you still go home tired, but you're happy tired. You're not like, oh my God, there's no hope for this kid. <laughs> so it's a, uh, it's really, you know, and if you have resistant teachers, go in there and take data on how much time they spend having to deal with this kid's behavior. You know, they spend a lot of time. And so you want to you wanna say you're still going to spend that much time, but it's going to be in a different way and he's going to be better. Okay? And all this, I have, all, uh, this is all in the program, all these, for, it looks like this, for example. So how are the daily, daily, daily sessions? On program day one, the coach is in the room for 20 minutes. The intervals between point opportunities is 30 seconds. So every 30 seconds, there is a beep going to be beeping on your, on your gym boss timer. 
wherever it is. It's the greatest thing, this Jim Boss timer. It's not part of the kit. We do have a timer in the kit that, that um, actually we give to parents, and it works well, but this Jim Boss thing is just awesome. It vibrates and it beeps. And so you set it for 30 seconds, you just, every time you hear this thing vibrate and the cards are green, you get a point. And, um, and then uh, the total points possible are 40 because it's 20 minutes, so every 30 seconds that's 40 points possible, but the kid only needs 32. This is always 80% of you know what they could earn so they need 32 points to get their reward the minimal positive feedback for the coach is nine and the teacher one and what this means is you can see that it goes from nine to one seven to two four to three three to four three to four what we're trying to do here is increase teacher positive interactions with the kids it can be a lot more than that but some teachers don't give positive feedback so during this 20 minutes the coach will say to the teacher you just teach I'm going to be sitting here giving feedback to Sally and uh, I want you just during that 20 minutes one time I want you to make sure that she's on green and give her a compliment or pat her on the shoulder or do something only one time on day two I want you to do it twice on day three, three times. On day four, four times. And on day five, four times. So we want to change teacher behavior, OK? Um, and again, positive feedback means thumbs up, wink, pat on the back, something on their paper, anything to just make contact with the kid, OK? Uh, the reward is earned every day. So they earn if they have this number of points or more, they earn a reward for the whole class. And it has to happen right after the session every day. Then after day five, the teacher takes over. So now the session is 30 minutes. Every five minutes, the kid gets a point opportunity. They can earn six, but they need five. And the teacher just notices the kid with every point. John, you, or Bob, you just earned a point. Excellent job. You know, Sally, you, oh, no, oh, it's always Bob. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Bob. <laughs> OK. And then, and then you can see here that on day 13, now we're playing the game all day. And the teacher typically has, there's also a lanyard in the, in the kit. They like to put this card around their neck, you know, it kind of so that it's always there. And they just hang a pen and they can, they can put their thing, okay, their points. Uh, sometimes you have to put a clip on here so it doesn't turn by itself and the kids say, oh, the cards are red and he's doing good. <laughs> um, so you see on day, so on day 13, it, it's done all day, but it's every eight minutes. And here every other day they get a point opportunity. So now they have to have two days in a row that they make their points to get the reward. So we're fading out the program. On day 21, we're playing it all day. Now it's every 10 minutes to get a point opportunity. And they get a, a, a reward on the 10th day. So now it's really like kind of stretched out. So we fade it out. We start out really intense and then fade it out. OK? But again, don't worry about this. This is all in the, this is all in the book. How long does home base take? The coach starts home base after the child has been successful playing the green red card game for three days. And the reason why we do that is, is that um, we used to wait until 10 days, but uh, we find that the first couple of days, the parents are really excited and they're really happy that the teacher is doing this for that kid and that the coaches, the coach calls them every day to let them know how well things are going. And so we want to keep that momentum going. So we, in, in, the, in the old kit, it says after 10 days, but we really want you to start home base after the third day. And then we can say to parents, he really responds well. He does great with positives. We want to try for you to try that at home. Okay. Uh, so six weekly, usually 45 minutes to one hour meeting with parents. Meetings can be conducted at home, at school, at the library, or any other place that's convenient. Uh, we like to go to the home. In some uh, places where we've been, teachers are not allowed to go to their home. Uh, it's, it's up to you, whatever your rules are and whatever you want. But we often meet, the parents often come to school and they meet at school you know, or at the library, or we go meet them at McDonald's, or, you know, wherever we want to accommodate the parents and make it easy for them. 
Uh, these topics are covered during home base, sharing school, cooperation, limit setting, problem solving, friendship skills, confidence building, and they all build on each other. So often we'll go to the home for the first meeting and the parents will say, oh, this kid drives me nuts. You know, what do I do to punish him? And we say, oops, you gotta wait till week three. We first have to do the week one and week two. And they don't like that because they want to know. We, we teach time out in week three. They wanna know, how do we punish this kid? How do we put him in time out? What do I do? Oops, you have to wait. <laughs> and usually by the time we get to week three, we've already talked about having the five basic principles, doing the positive stuff. They get stickers for cooperating. They get a, a, a cooperation chart. And then, uh, and then we go into limit setting. So again, here is <coughs> just a flow chart. It's conducted with caregivers and parents. The strategies help the children practice the skills that are uh, improving school adjustment. It's always about helping Johnny be successful at school. So when parents, when you go to their house and they start talking about, well, my, my, my husband, you know, if, if he wasn't such an alcoholic and blah, then you say, I hear what you're saying. Let's talk about how we can help Johnny be successful at school. Always it's about how we can help Johnny be successful at school. If they need more help, you're not expected to be a counselor or a psychologist or a psychiatrist. You're only the first step coach. So if they need more help, you say, here is the number of the counselor at school. Or you, know, you refer them to the school people that can be a resource for them. Your job is not to solve their domestic problems. And you know, it's only to give them activities they can do with a kid that are, that are helpful. Because the research is very clear. Is if parents spend five to 10 minutes of one-on-one -on -one positive time with their child, that it makes a huge difference. And many parents don't know how to do that. They don't know how to play with their kids. And so we give them all these fun activities to do. What do home-based sessions consist of? The coach is expected to deliver and demonstrate the first step activities and help the parents be positive with their child. Parents receive a handbook. It's the, the, this handbook. They get the parent tip cards and activities that help the child be successful. It's not a parent training program, which is very important that it's not like a training program. It's only to help people give, give them easy, fun things to do with their kids. The coach is not expected to be a counselor or a mediator, like I said. What is the role of the coach? You must have a strong commitment to help the focus student be successful as possible. Be an effective communicator, and this is tricky because what you're gonna hear is the parents are gonna say, well, that teacher is so mean and he picks on him and blah, 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 blah. And you don't wanna fall into the trap. Yeah, I know, I saw that teacher. She's pretty darn mean, <laughs> you know, <laughs> even if she is. <laughs> you can't do that. The teacher's gonna say, oh, those parents, they're so awful. Oh my gosh, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay. You know, you can't get, you have to be an advocate for the child and not get, fall into that trap of taking sides. Um, work cooperatively with uh, school, oops, with school staff and parents. And uh, model the five basic principles that you've heard, been heard about today a lot with teachers and parents, coordinate and ensure effective, oops, <laughs> implementation, oops, and uh, provide necessary materials and support to the teacher and the parents. So that's the role of the coach. Uh, the coach also observes the target student, they meet with the caregiver and the teacher, they provide materials, and then they teach the child one-on-one. -on -one. <coughs> and I'm gonna show you uh, a, a videotape of a coach doing that in a minute. Meet with the teacher to plan intervention. Become familiar with the classroom routines because you have to know what is expected is different in different teachers' classrooms. Meet with the parents to explain the program. Meet with the focus kid to explain the program and the role play expectations. Meet with the entire class. Implement the program for 30 minutes the first five days. Contact parents after each session for five days and this is very important. We, uh, we don't know, there are so many little parts to first up, we don't know which is the most important one, but we know this one. Often parents don't ever get a positive phone call home. 
they only get a phone call from the school when something bad has happened. So now the coach calls and says, you know, uh, Johnny played a red and green card day game today and he did awesome. You know, he cleaned up right after block time and he earned all his points and they got to blow bubbles and it was so much fun. Parents are blown away. You know, we have some parents that will, you know, you'll talk to their answering machine and then after the third day, they'll, they'll, they'll pick up and they'll say, could you wait so I can put it on speakerphone because my husband doesn't believe that you're calling to say something positive. <laughs> you know, and they get, they, uh, it's really, really important. Even if you don't do first step, it's a huge intervention to do with parents. Call them, just like you do for every negative, the four positives with the kids. If you need parents to tell them about something bad that, is, that has happened at school with a kid, you need to call them at least four times to let them know when something good has happened, or at least send a note home, or, or an email, or something. Simple, specific, jo bless you. Johnny did a great job following directions during science today. That's it, you know. The, you have to do that to negate for those negative things, and then you get much more parent uh, cooperation. And don't wait. Start in September. I mean, if you know you're going to have one of these munchkins, start sending positive notes home because you know you're going to need the parents after a while. So um, transition the program to the teacher, conduct uh, the uh, weekly meetings, and support uh, the thing in Uh What is the focus of the first meeting with the parents? You work as a team. Your attitude is critical. This is, we're talking about little kids. This kid is, is not like this kid's going to jail, right? People sometimes make it so heavy, like, oh my gosh, this is the end. No, this is, we're, we're helping Johnny to, to be successful at school. We're gonna work together. It's light, it's easy, it's doable, it's hopeful. So your attitude is critical. Start with positives. And this is another thing that is just amazing. When I go to these meetings, and I'll have the teacher, and I'll have the, sometimes the principal and the parents and the whatever. And the first thing the teacher will say, well, he really had a bad day today. You know, he punched Johnny in the face and he stole a watch. And you see the parents just turn off. Don't do it. And the same with if parents come pick up their kids and don't go into how horrible the kid was. If you've done it already three or four times and nothing's changed, it's not working. So what you do is you think of one thing that happened. That he, this kid has tortured you all day, right? <clears throat> and then you think of one thing. You say, oh, you know, when the bell rang, he right away got up and got his coat. <laughs> and if the parents say, how did he do it? Well, he, he, the bell rang, he got his coat right away. <laughs> and then you turn around and you go, you're busy with other parents. You know, you leave that parent sit there so they can't ask you any more questions. <laughs> but this whole thing about... Um, you know, being the martyr, like, oh my gosh, you know what I had to put up with today? The other thing is if you write journals, I don't know, and I don't know about the special ed people, but we have some assistants that all they do is write journals about children, about the bad things they do, and then they send the journal home. And then the parent, can you imagine you are a parent with a student that is ch has challenging behaviors and the kid is at school and he comes home and you read all this stuff. How do you feel? Horrible. You just want to kill the kid. Why can't you behave at school? You know, and it's bad. Now, if you, you can do this, you can do it. You can try it two or three times. If the behavior doesn't change, stop wasting your time. Stop those journals. From now on, we're only going to write positive things in there. And if it's only one thing, he blew his nose and used a Kleenex, you know, good for him. But it does not help. You know, please look at yourself and see. I see hours and hours and hours of precious teaching time wasted by people sitting there writing in the, in the journal, and it doesn't help. Database decisions. If your intervention, whatever you're doing, is not changing the behavior, you have to change something. Don't keep doing the same thing over and over. It's like Einstein says, insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results, right? So please watch it, that you don't fall into that trap of, well, I have to. No, you don't have to. Well, 
I mean, it, you know, to me, what it sounds like is that this is more like a teacher training than anything else, that, that we're teaching teachers to focus on the positives and not on the negatives. But if we grow up in a shame-based society where, where it's very, we're very you know, penalized, we're punitive, there's punishment, there's always this need to shame you know, other people. Um, so it makes us feel better, or the teachers feel better, or whatever it may be. Do you, have you ever introduced this to um, the top and, you know, start, because I think, you know, like we talked about this at break, you know, it starts at the top. If the, if, the, if the principals are punitive, the teachers are going to be following suit and be punitive with the kids. So have you ever introduced it at the top level where the assistant principals and the principals start doing this with teachers oh, yeah. and being positive well, that's, uh, that's the positive behavior intervention support. That's the whole thing about principals catching teachers doing the right thing. But what's funny when you mentioned, have you ever tried this? I, we, I worked at the Institute on Violence and Destructive Behavior at the University of Oregon. That's where we developed this. And so we have on our staff some officers, police officers. So I was doing a first step training and this guy was new and he was supposed to go to my first step training. I said, what are you doing here? And he says, well, I'm supposed to be here. I'm supposed to know all about all these activities. And he, after the training, he says, oh my God, you've got to come to our police station. My, uh, uh, my superiors need to hear this. Yeah. We only get called in when we're in trouble. And we, we are, you know, same, same thing. Yeah, no, but that's why you need possibility to because that's what it is. It's from the top down. But anyway, we, we need to start, when we talk to parents, you know, make sure that we mention positive. Focus on the strength of the child rather than on the weaknesses. And then the coach needs to listen, keep it lie, and, conv and convey hope. This is uh, fun. It's fun. It's not like, you know, the end of the It's fun. We wish every kid could do it. So I'm going to show you a video of a meeting with the parent. And then after that, we will take our lunch break. You guys are doing so good. Only one person fell asleep. That's amazing. <laughs> after the initial meeting with the teacher, set up a time to meet with the teacher and the parent or caregiver. Before this meeting, you will want to make a plan to make the parents feel comfortable and begin to feel part of the team. Have the teacher plan to start the meeting with at least three positive statements about the child. Use key phrases like, we need to teach Johnny how to, instead of, he needs to learn how to. Avoid listing all the misbehaviors of their child. Focus on teaching the child to follow directions. The goals of this meeting with the parent are to stress the main focus of giving attention for behavior we want and less attention for misbehaviors. Briefly explain the first step program. Explain the roles of each participant. Elicit cooperation to help the child be as successful as possible. Brainstorm a menu of activities the parents can do with the child at home. Exchange phone numbers and times to connect. Sign agreements and give everyone a copy. Hi, I'm so glad you could make it today. This is such a wonderful program. I know that once we get started, you're really going to appreciate the value that we have here. And I have, um, want you to know that I've observed Jacob a couple of times, both in class and on the playground. And I see that he's a very active little boy. He's got a great imagination and he seems to be very creative. And um, I've heard from his teacher that he's got a couple of real strengths in some of the academic areas. So we have a lot to work with here. The purpose of our program is to just help him be as successful as we can in school. And by playing a game called the red card, green card game. And we have children think about traffic lights and that green usually means go and red usually means stop. And the way this game is played is um, I will be in the room for five days working with Jacob. I'll be working very closely with him and monitoring his behavior for a short period of time during the day. After that time, the teacher takes over the game. So this is really meant as a visual cue. And sometimes children respond so much better to a visual cue than being told something over and over. So this is just a little reminder. Great, you're doing good. You're on green, everything's going smooth. And if I see that he starts getting off task or not following directions, then if he earns 80% of his points, then he will win the game that day. And when he wins, he'll get to choose a fun activity for the whole class. Oh, he will like that. That is he just like so that. wonderful. He loves to be the center of attention. Mm -hmm. He will definitely be the center of attention. There is nothing the parent responsibilities. 
I have a little sheet here that I'm going to let you take home and this is a simple guide that to kind of remind you of what you all as parents will be responsible for. Part of it is sitting down and making a list of activities that would be fun for you to do with Jacob because as the parents your responsibility in this game will be to get the green card every day from him out of his backpack. You can see if he's earned his points and what activity he played, then you can really praise him for earning that activity. That is a good communication between parents and teachers. He, you will know what he's earned at school. What if he doesn't earn his points? What would That's that? a very good question. If he doesn't earn his points, take the card and look at it and sign it that you've seen it and just say, Jacob, I see that you played the red and green card to game today and you didn't earn your points, but that's okay. You can try again tomorrow and leave it at that. We don't want any conversation over why he did or didn't win the game, why he didn't win the so game. you don't want us to talk to him about what he did wrong that day? Absolutely not. We, the basis of this whole program is to focus on the positive. The only other thing I want you to do before we leave is just, um, if you would, wouldn't mind signing that you are agreeing to have him participate in this program. And I like this sheet because I have, I will have Jacob sign it after I talk to him about the red card, green card game, and it makes it a Official. Mm -hmm. And little children love that being official. Mm -hmm. Now they're they're really knowing that what when they write their name on there that you know it and I know it and the teacher knows it. So we're all on the same page. After the game. parent. Or okay. So, do you have any questions about that first parent meeting? You good? Uh, we talk about, as you as you know, little little tiny things that that seem uh, insignificant, but they're important. Uh, that we need to teach Johnny, not he needs to learn, because you know if you say he needs to learn, apparently, oh my gosh, he's been trying to learn this forever and he's never. But if I say, if you say as adults, we need to teach him to do this, there's hope. So little things are are important. Um, you, you saw that she explained the strategies of the program. She talked about that, oops, that she will um, teach expected behaviors through role play, help the child choose rewards, explain the green red card game to the class, and then play the re 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 green red card game with the class. Uh, during the first meeting, again, the coach tells the parents, I'll call you every day for five days. I'll start home base. I'll meet with you once a week. I would like for you to play home-based games for five minutes each night and practice home-based skills. So the, that's the basic information. You agree to uh, a, t a time to call the parents, identify home awards that they're willing to do, and this is important because a lot of times parents are so happy that school is going to do something with their kid. They say, oh yeah, he wants to go to Disneyland. and. And um, then it's, uh, oh yeah, he really wants a skateboard. You say, you know, those are all great, but we really want you to find things that you can do alone with your child, like maybe playing a board game or uh, reading a story or going for a walk, uh, feeding the dog. The, uh, it all has to do with a parent and a child doing a one-on-one -on -one positive activity for five minutes. And they can do the same thing night in and night out if they want. You know, if the kid wants the same story every night, that's just fine. Only the parent will now say, you get to have this extra story because you played the red and green card game so well. Mm -hmm.